Welcome to our Freedom From Suffering Now How To V blog series. I'm Dr. Steve Grinstead. Today I want to talk about how to tell the difference between pain and suffering. And that is so important in chronic pain management. Because one of the things I always tell people is your pain is inevitable, but your suffering is definitely optional. So let's take a look at pain. You know, there's a saying that goes back a long time, Sir Francis Bacon says, knowledge is power. So understanding pain becomes a high priority for people. Unfortunately, most people who undergo pain management just want to be fixed. They just want the pain to stop. And I can really identify with that. I've been living with my own chronic pain for well over 30 years. And sometimes when I have a flare up, I just want it to stop but it's really important to know what's going on. So what I want to talk about is some different types of pain. We have acute pain. We have chronic pain. We have recurrent acute pain, sometimes called pain flare-ups. We have anticipatory pain and neuropathic pain. So these are the different types of pain we need to learn how to Let's start with acute pain. First of all, my premise with people is you need to make peace with your pain. You need to stop fighting it. You need to stop seeing pain as the enemy. You need to make pain your friend. Because pain is there for a reason. You know, without pain receptors, we'd be in really big trouble. You know, it tells us when something's going wrong that there's some damage. It's usually easy to know what's going on. You know, like if you cut yourself, if you break a bone, if you giving childbirth, uh, you know, the healing process is usually time limited. And for most people, analgesics or even narcotics, what I mean by that is opiates or benzodiazepines, may be used. Now for people in recovery, you always have to be careful, no matter what type of pain intervention you're using. So that's acute pain, it's immediate, time limited. There's a big difference, though, when it turns into a chronic condition. Right now in this country, we're experiencing a tremendous amount of people living with chronic pain. And not only that, they're suffering with chronic pain. You know, if you look at the research numbers, it's anywhere from 60 million all the way up to 115 million in some reports. But basically, to be chronic pain, three to six months, it's going on for a while. For many people, the generator or the source is usually challenging. Like, I injured my lower back, but then that went away, and all of a sudden I started feeling all this burning and numbing kind of sensations in my leg. You know, what's going on here? A long time, the pain keeps going well after the healing process. Like someone's had a surgical procedure. The surgeon meets with you a few times after the surgery and says it's all better, everything's healed but you still hurt. Sometimes pain signals get turned on and they don't get turned off and they're not serving the intended purpose. You know, this is putting it rather simple, but you know, simple is good. The treatment for people is very frustrating, but it's also frustrating for your healthcare providers too. Pain flare-ups. You've gone along, everything's managed good, and all of a sudden, ouch! You know, you have an acute pain episode. It pops up. Let's say using the arbitrary 1 to 10 pain scale, you get your pain levels down to a 2, 3, or 4, and feel like, wow, that's good, I can handle this. And all of a sudden, it pops up to 7, 8, 9. A lot of times, the episodes are brief, sometimes minutes, sometimes hours. And in between these flare-up episodes, you're in that normal 2, 3, 4 range. A lot of times we can identify what led us to the flare-up. And sometimes it's a physical something, it's an overdoing something, it's a lack of sleep something, or it's not dealing with something psychologically or emotionally that I should be dealing with. There's some identifiable lead-ups to the pain flare-up. 
The big thing is, is it needs a separate treatment plan. Unfortunately, many people run into problems with running out of their prescription pain meds because when they have a pain flare-up, the first thing they do is reach for a pain pill. Most of the time, I'd say as much as 90% of the time, non-medication interventions are better. You know, I'll always ask people that have this phenomenon of using extra pain meds for flare-ups and stuff. I says, okay, so when you have the flare-up, how long do you wait before you take the pills? Well, as soon as I notice it. And how long does it take before you start feeling better? Five or ten minutes. Well, guess what? That wasn't the medication. That's the bad news, but that's also the good news. That means your perception of pain is what's And that leads us into talking about anticipatory pain. A lot of people get so afraid, so afraid of doing normal day-to-day -day living tasks because what if I get flared up? What if I can't move? What if I get bedridden? And they get stressed out. A lot of times this anticipatory reaction is triggered by environmental triggers. I have to go to a stressful meeting. I have to meet with somebody I don't want to meet with. Uh, I have an argument with my significant other. I have problems at work. A lot of times it's internally generated. Having a problem dealing with stress, dealing with emotions, dealing with problematic thinking errors. So there's something going on internally. And most often, a lot of times it's associated with previous times when your pain flares up. So you get stuck in this anticipatory reaction. And you need to learn how to cope with anticipatory pain. But more importantly, I believe it's important to move beyond anticipatory pain and realize that you're going to get what you expect. So if you expect pain and suffering, you're going to get more of that. If you expect to get through this with clarity and focus and ease, you're getting... Then we have neuropathic pain. Usually this is caused by some kind of nerve damage. And the injury or the pain persists long beyond the normal time that it takes that healing. You know, there's an estimate that most things are healed as best they'll ever be by six to nine months. And neuropathic pain can be ongoing. Many people have that for years. I know I have neuropathic pain flare-ups frequently. And my injury was well over 30 years ago. There's different types of neuropathic pain symptoms. Some of the symptoms are the tingling, itching, and numbness. Any of these familiar? How about shooting, burning, stabbing, aching, electrical type sensations? Sometimes people perceive warm as hot or cool as cold. You know, um, non-harmful stimulus gets identified as this is bad. So then we have the spreading type pain where it radiates or spreads beyond the initial area of tissue injury. And then we have phantom limb pain. And with this one, realize it's not in their head. It's real. I work with people all the time who've had amputations. One person I'm thinking of particularly, he lost his leg from the knee down, but yet his right foot is burning and cramping a lot. Now, logically, intellectually, he knows he no longer has a right foot, but his brain is telling him that his right foot is burning or aching. Sometimes it's itching. And that's the worst for him because there's just no way to scratch that itch. I really like to educate people about the three major components of pain. The biological, the ascending pain signal, the signal that tells the brain, the thalamus in the brain, that hey, something's wrong. It's our central control unit. This is where all the pain signals go. That part of the brain then interprets that signal and gives it meaning or purpose, texture, feeling, type, etc. And the piece that often gets overlooked is the social cultural. You know, chronic pain people often gets assigned 
to a role that's not so happy and not so pleasant. Workers comp patients, they're guilty until proven innocent. They're malingering, they're conning, manipulating the system. Uh, people, maybe you've seen this, you're at a busy shopping center and someone pulls up and parks in a handicapped spot. They get out of the car and they look perfectly normal. Now they may not be, there may be some real critical medical reason why they have to have that handicapped parking. And then there's what we learn about pain from our families and our culture. Some of the beliefs can be good, some of them can be bad, some of them The big thing though is to differentiate between pain and suffering. Because most people say, I'm suffering with chronic pain. My pain is killing me. I can't stand this. It's horrible. I'm going to explode. Well, that's an amplification. That's, that's suffering. Pain is that ascending pain signal that goes up to the brain and, and warns us that something needs attention. Suffering is the interpretation. So instead of, ouch, this hurts, it could be, this is awful, terrible, unbearable, horrible, it's killing me. That's suffering. The point here is pain's inevitable, suffering's optional, and I really believe that freedom from suffering is everyone's right and their responsibility. It needs a proactive approach to achieve freedom from suffering. Here's a right brain interpretation. One of my patients made this. I said, tell you what, what I want you to do is come back with some type of artistic interpretation about your pain on a bad day, what it's like for you. And got this ferocious, scary looking dragon. The title, My Pain, The Monster Within, was what she wrote on it. And basically, this is really suffering. This is suffering. Now this, after the same woman finished treatment with me, I asked her, why don't you bring me an artistic interpretation with your relationship today with your pain? And her caption on this one was making peace with my pain. And there's this friendly cartoonish like dragon with a little boy. And what a difference, what a difference. Now that brings us to a thought-provoking comment. Is it physical or is it psychological emotional? Hmm. Years ago I started developing an instrument I called the ascending versus descending pain signals. I'm going to give you some samples of each side. There's many more of them on the actual instrument, but I'm going to give you a few highlights. Let's start with the physiological or the physical pain symptoms. On a bad pain day, would you ever use words like my pain is aching or throbbing, splitting or piercing, irritated or sore, burning, stinging, inflamed, sharp, hot, radiating, tender, painful, numbing or tingling, now all those are physiological type symptoms of pain. Those are what the medications are usually meant to address. Now you'll see some of those are neuropathic symptoms, you know, like the uh, burning and stinging, the hot and the radiating, the numbing and the tingling, those are neuropathic symptoms. Usually the opiates don't work real well for those. Things that do work well for that are Lyrica, pregabalin, Neurontin, Gabapentin, or duloxetine, Cymbalta. Now those are some of the things that might help with neuropathic pain. Now let's look at suffering, the psychological side. So on a bad pain day, would you say your pain is dreadful, severe, irritating, nagging, saddening, depressing, distressing, excruciating, grueling, punishing, upsetting, aggravating, terrifying, dreadful, or fatiguing and debilitating. Now like I say, this is just a sampling. There's many more on my instrument, but these are some of the ways to take a difference. When you find yourself using medication
for the psychological suffering type symptoms, you can get in big trouble. Because those meds aren't meant for that. That's like having an infected cut and the only thing you do is hide it and cover it up. You don't clean it, you don't medicate it, you don't have to let it heal, you just bandage it. So knowing the difference is really important. And the other thing, that right hand column, the psychological suffering, I call that the amplifier circuit. That raises the perceived intensity of the ones in the left hand column. And what's really magic, and a lot of my patients think of it this way, the magic is if you turn the symptoms down on the right without changing anything with your medication, the perception of the symptoms on the left decrease. They get less severe. Pain versus suffering. This is it in one slide. So we've reached the end of another how-to v-blog and I want to invite you to make sure to check out my website freedomfromsufferingnow.com and especially my book Freedom From Suffering A Journey of Hope. I have a new Facebook page. It's the Spiritual Warrior Without Armor. In incorporating the spiritual components. My last v-blog was on the spiritual part of chronic pain management. And then there's my professional page on Facebook. And if you're someone or know someone you care about living with chronic pain, send them to chronicpainanonymous.org. If you want to check out any of my publications or Mr. Terry Gorski's publications, go to relapse.org. You know, if you want to contact me, the best way is go to freedomfromsufferingnow.com, and I'm offering on our homepage right now for a limited time a free 15-minute consultation. I'd love to hear from you, and as always, onward and upward, and stay tuned for the next How-To V-Blog.